Texas here, when, when you guys first opened back up and just ended all of the, the COVID restrictions, all the blue state governors were saying this is so reckless and insane and people are going to die. And then the, the death rate was no worse than in any of these other blue states. And now they all stopped. Yeah, And they don't even acknowledge point, it. Everyone who wants to point to Florida, like Florida, what they did, they had the highest rate of death in COVID. Yeah, but they have the oldest people. And if you age adjust, it's no different than California. Yeah, yeah that's right. If you age adjust, that, that was the right way to do it. He was right. Like it's not no, no one's saying that COVID's good. It was not good. But these people that did things that were not good for society, were not good for small businesses, were not good for people's mental health, were not good for the development of children's language skills. Like all these things were wrong, man. Well, look, I mean, there's so much stuff. That we're, it's going to be like a generation before we even see the damage from the lockdowns. Oh, yeah. And we won't even be able to know for sure what exactly, like trace it back to what exactly was the damage from the lockdowns. But just think about what a nightmare, you know, 2020, I mean, there were riots in that year that were obviously about the George Floyd thing, but were very related to the lockdowns as well. Like it, it wasn't a coincidence that after three months of being locked in your home with no bar, no sports, no friends house, your job. no work, you know, right. that you, then all of a sudden people were rioting because cops have done, you know, fucked up shit a lot of times before. And this one led to national, you know, riots. Um, that was all part of the cost of lockdowns. So yeah. the, the economy, the inflation that we're dealing with right now was a huge part of the lockdowns. And it was partly because they printed trillions of dollars as a result of being like, well, what are we going to do to make sure we're not in a depression if we just stop the economy right now? So, of course, the answer is always, well, we'll print trillions of dollars, hand out most of that to big corporations and <laughs> give some crumbs to, to the American people. Um, and so now... You think of the cost of inflation. I mean, people are getting destroyed from the, the value of the dollar yeah. uh, going down right now and the cost of everything rising. This is all – these things are all interrelated, you know, and it's like uh, – it's very hard to measure the cost of shutting down society. No, and that should have been taken into consideration. The fact that it wasn't is so crazy, but everybody wanted to be safe. And the government, you know, said we have to at least have – it has to sh have an illusion – that we're doing something to protect people. Yeah. But really, I mean, in, in hindsight at this point, looking back at it, that if the government had just said, look, there's this uh, there's this virus, this nasty upper respiratory virus that's uh, coming over here. And we think that um, if you are if you're in very bad health, because this is like by March, it was very clear in the data of who was dying. From this, it was very clear that it was old and sick people. This was right yeah, but away. You, you, we, they focused a lot on outliers. They focused on young people. Yes, and a yes. lot of those young people, unfortunately, were ventilated. Yeah, well, that's true too. You know, Michael Yo's doctor told him, "I'm not going to put you on a ventilator because if I do, you'll die." And he got it early. He yeah. got it in like February. So it so was the, early on. His doctor was wise enough, fortunately, to lucky, say, "Yeah." yeah. Yeah. No, but I'm just saying if you were being honest and not focusing on the outliers and actually looking at like what we can learn from this data, they, they could have just said, look, if you are at risk, we really recommend you isolate yourself for everybody else. Try to be smart. Try to be as healthy as you can. Like, be, you know what I mean? And then if you feel sick at all, don't come into work. Like, right. don't do not power through it. Do not assume it's allergies or a cold or something like get that. Tested. Like, make sure get tested. And the tests weren't as readily available back then. But just stay home. Wait right. it out. You know what I mean? Whatever. Just doing that and not locking down the economy and not having all of these crazy restrictions would have unquestionably been a much, much better way to handle COVID. Because look, from all these states, if you look at the, the lockdown states versus the non-lockdown states, or the lockdown countries versus the non-lockdown countries, if you look at the mask mandate counties versus the non-mask mandate counties, you can't draw any conclusion from any of them. The truth is that this virus just moved the way it was going to move. And so all you were doing was just destroying people's lives. Yeah. You were just adding more of a cost than the virus itself was going to add, which was already significant. And here's another thing they never did. When they got data, and the data was pretty clear, that a large percentage of the people in the ICU for COVID were deficient in vitamin D. And this is not saying that vitamin D is going to prevent you from getting COVID, but it 100% will increase the power of your immune system. Vitamin D deficiency is a real problem yeah. with, with people's overall metabolic health. And there's a large percentage of our country because we stay indoors all the time. We don't do things. We're not active outside. And that it's 
Vitamin D is a hormone, and your body produces it from the sun, and that's the best way to get it. But if you're not getting it that way, you can supplement, and it's a definite best second choice, and it really helps, yeah. and it makes a big fucking difference. It makes a big difference in everything, in muscle development, brain function. Like, it's a real fucking problem with human beings. They had that data. There was no, there was no like public declaration of this. Oh yeah, was, this was known way before COVID. Yeah. Such a simple thing to tell people: vitamin D is so important. Go outside, lay in the sun, go to a fucking park. Parks should be able, that that when they shut parks down, that was fucking nuts. Playgrounds but, down, basketball courts down, the everything. ocean. Yeah. Remember the yeah. fucking guy wakeboarding? <laughs> yeah, it's like th th these people are out of their fucking minds. And if they just did that, then I would know at least you are taking measures based on data. To try to help people and protect people. Right. And and just the insane thing is that they they all accuse people like us who talk about it like this of like spreading misinformation throughout yeah. the whole time. Meanwhile, the people who say that like, you know, right, like you should you should stay inside are not accused. You know, they don't get accused of spreading misinformation. The people who say the people like the president of the United States and Dr. Fauci, the head of the pandemic response, who say if you get the vaccine, you won't get COVID and you won't spread it. Yeah. Point blank. Point blank. That's what they say. Yeah. That's how they sold this to they the American sold. people. Yeah. And that's not like, that's not, you know, that's not going to get you kicked off Twitter. No, it's or fucking, whatever. it's wild, man. 